Hi, welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where we have joining us joining us here today, uh, Camille Elaine, who is the Assistant Program Scientist for the Space Station. And she's going to tell us a little bit today about some of the uh, science experiments that are specifically aimed at getting students involved in, in science and uh, STEM activities. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so I think uh, one of the ones that we hear a lot about is the Sally, Sally Ride Earth Cam, mm -hmm. and I know that uh, that's been back in operation lately, and maybe you have some updated results on that for us? Yes. So what's new about Sally Ride Earth Cam uh, since last month when the last mission was held is the record number of students that we've been able to reach with oh, that wow. mission. During the summer, we were able to reach 34,000 students, 562 schools, in 34 countries across six continents. And so those are record-breaking numbers for us. That's very impressive. Very impressive. EarthCAM stands for Earth Knowledge Acquired by Middle School Students. And it was an educational project developed by Dr. Sally Ride and her company, Sally Ride Science, really back in Expedition 2. So it's one of the longest running ex um, investigations we've had on board the space station. And it is targeted at middle school students and engaging them in their studies of science, if they're doing geography or geology, for example, or, or math. Um, they do the trajectories, they calculate the trajectories of the space station. Um, so what they do is that they select different targets around the Earth that they are interested in, different geological features of our Earth, and they send those targets up to the camera that's programmed on board the space station. And then as the space station is flying over those targets, it takes the images and those images are then downloaded and the students have access to them. So they are actually getting the real life um, features of these different sites versus what may be in the textbook developed two or three years ago. That's got to be exciting for Very a student exciting. to take a picture from space, basically. Very exciting. The other aspect of this project, which is very, very interesting, is the fact that the students who actually manage the program, they run the missions, are undergrad students at the University of Cali California, San Diego. They are the ones who upload the targets. They are the ones who download the images and put it on the web, accessible to all students. So, so we student are student experiment run by students. Exactly. Cool. And so we feel like we are growing growing the next generation of mission operators and flight controllers based on this, uh, the opportunities they have to manage this program. That's, that's really amazing. I, I'm sure that's an exciting program for the students. Yes. And then I know that sometimes they also get to actually talk with astronauts uh, via ham radio. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, that's called the ham radio on ISS. Um, and students, it's another global program like EarthCAM. Students from all over the world get access real time to the astronauts if the ISS is flying directly over where their um, school is or where the event is taking place called a direct contact. They have about 10 minutes to talk to the astronauts, um, or even if the astronauts are in the sleep period and school is in session, there's a way to telebridge that connection through some ground stations that are located around um, our, our Earth, uh, and the students still get to access the astronauts. And it is an amazing, amazing, inspiring experience because they instantly realize that they're talking to another human being that is off of the Earth, you know, in a real-time situation. So it's a very inspiring, very engaging activity. Have you gotten to listen in on any of those I conversations? Have. I have, actually. I've, I've been a part of two. One, in my birth country of Trinidad and Tobago, where there was an, an auditorium filled with 400 students from all over the Caribbean who hadn't ever, had never, ever dreamt about space, didn't know anything about space. And they got to learn about space communications, how we communicate to the ISS, but also in the anticipation of getting to speak to the astronauts. You, can tell, you know, just the excitement and, and the engagement and, and how it really inspired them to go off and do their studies in a, in a more, 
effective and, and better way, you know? I hope it does. Um, well, I guess NASA isn't the only one who has um, some of the educational science experiments. European Space Agency also has some that mm -hmm. they're working specifically with Alexander Gerst mm -hmm. this time around That's on. right. That's correct. I think the Flying Classroom is what it's called. Can you yes. tell us about that? Yes, it's an educational payload dem demonstration that we do across the partnerships. And what he's specifically focused on is demonstrating fundamental physics properties in space. And so, for example, he's going to access just everyday items that's on board the space station. For example, he's going to demonstrate the movement of a gyroscope using two CDs and a rod that will connect them and looking at the stability of the gyroscope's angular momentum relative to the trajectory of the ISS as, as it orbits the Earth. Another one he's going to look at is how pure water forms in space versus how it would form on Earth. And the principle states that forming decays at a much slower rate in space than it is on Earth. So by him um, mixing air and water together in a syringe, shaking it vigorously and forming those um, foams, he would look over time at how it decays and compares it to what's happening on Earth. So it's an observation that that the students are going to see um, how different principles are demonstrated on in in microgravity environment. Those are probably pretty difficult um, things to explain here on the ground. So Absolutely, I bet that's a big help for teachers. The, exactly, exactly. Um, and so the the video is just provided to teachers, or, or um... yes, it's available to teachers on the website. In this particular case, it's an ESA um, demonstration, so it will be available on their website. NASA does um, our astronauts do EPO demos that are available on on the NASA website. Okay, well, I know um, the Cygnus uh, is getting ready to leave now, but it, when it arrived, it brought with it a few of uh educational experiments. Mm -hmm. Can you go through some of those? Yes, those are called the Space Flight Student Experiment Program run by the National Center for Space Science Education in partnership with Nanorex um, Co Corporation, which is a commercial entity. And they give students access to sending their designed experiments to space. So two were very interesting to me. Um, one was looking at the crystallization and coagulation of proteins, and that's really important to us because one of our very high-valued uh, biological research that we do on space station is the growing of protein crystals. So thinking that high school students could actually design a similar experiment looking at how proteins grow, and we know when proteins grow in space, they grow at a much bigger size and much clearer than they would on Earth, and that gives insight into the structure structure of a protein, which is very beneficial to designing different drugs and therapeutics for diseases. And so to have high school students being able to develop a, a similar experiment looking at how this protein is, this particular protein is crystallized in space is very, very interesting if you think about that. Absolutely. What, what's the crew's involvement in that? Do they need to work with the experiment themselves or is it pretty self-contained? They are expected to activate and deactivate the experiment, but while the experiment is going on, they don't have any um, access to okay. it. Okay. All right. Well, that's easy to get that done with, with the minimum use of crew time. That's exactly. Exactly. Um, and then I know um, also the, uh, the station program works to connect science with students on Earth. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the ways, other ways that we do that? So, you know, um, Brandy, the space station, we did not build the space station to do education uh, activities and projects. But the presence of the space station and the presence of the crew members on board the space station really acts as um, an inspiration and a way of engaging students in their studies of science, technology, engineering, and math. And so it is a way for us to give access to students, uh, give them access to doing experiments on board the space station, and really growing the next generation of, of STEM workforce, not just for the U.S., but for, for all across the world. Do you, this is, um, I don't know if you would have any examples, but I know we have a lot of students who have come through here mm -hmm. as interns and, and co-ops mm -hmm. and things like that. Do you, 
are you seeing any of them come from programs that have done anything like that? Do you contact well, that at all? I started talking about that in the beginning with Earth Camp, okay. right, with the, the graduate students at UCSD who were trained to be mission operators for this particular Earth Camp. We have a few who are actually working here as flight controllers oh, wow. in mission control. So that is a, a concrete example Already of how... Already reaping the benefits. Exactly, exactly. Well, thanks so much. This is fascinating. I'm sure a lot of people will want to get their own students involved. So you can go to nasa.gov and find out more about all of these. Um, thanks again. This was Camille Elaine joining us, uh, the assistant program scientist for the International Space Station.